everyone, it's Patty Behan, and thank you for joining me in the studio today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make archival ink blended backgrounds. Okay, to begin, I'm going to be working on a piece of plain white cardstock. This happens to be a Wendy Vecchi white panel, and I have some colors of archival ink here, and I also have a mini ink blending tool with dome foam. And the reason I'm using dome foam for this technique is the dome foam catches a lot of ink at once and it'll just make the blending that much more easier. So to begin, I think I'm gonna start with my darker color first, which is Majestic Violet. And I'm going to apply the ink to the foam and then I'm just going to lightly make little circles. I'm going for like a bouquet technique here. You have that soft fuzzy look that looks pretty cool. So I'm just going to add a few dots there. Next, I'm going with our Vibrant Fuchsia. Again, we'll get the ink onto the foam. And then I'm just randomly placing the dots of ink here. And besides making dots, you could do stripes, you could do diagonals, or maybe even make some kind of a plaid. You can just have fun with it. And I'm just randomly doing this. Don't even think about it because you don't need to do that. And then next color, Rose Matter. And the reason I'm using three colors is you always wanna work in odd numbers and these colors work really well together. So that's why I chose them. And then we're just sort of filling in our blank spaces here. When you see there's not that much ink coming out onto the paper, then you just re-ink the foam. And then the key here is, I just wanna blend this all together. And we may have to go back and forth a bit, but this is how we start. Make sure you're getting in those white spaces. I sort of like to outline the edges here too. I don't know if you can tell. Let me bring that up a little bit. Get a little bit darker on those edges. And I like how this last lighter color is just blending everything nicely. Just a little bit more. And then I think I may want to go back and add just a little more purple because that's the first thing I see and maybe I can just put a little more of the darker color. to give, give it a little bit more of a blend. And I think that looks great. And then to finish it off, to make your card, let me just bring this back up close so that you can see. See how you get that nice like blurry effect? I really love the look of that. So now I'm going to stamp over it and I have some jet black archival ink and I have this um, stamp here. It, this, to me, this looks like a birthday card. So that's why I picked a saying that says make a wish and blow out the candles. I think that the little dots there look like balloons. And what I'm doing here is I like to over ink the stamp a little bit just so I make sure I get it good stamping all at once and then we'll just 
just go ahead and move this out of the way. And we press it down. Since this is a big stamp, I'm pressing it at each line here so that I make sure the ink transfers. And there we go, it's perfect. And if you find that you miss a spot, what you can do is go back in here with a little Sharpie and in black and you can hide any mistakes. Okay, so that's this technique, working on white cardstock. And now I wanna show you the effect you get when you do this with a stencil and when you use gloss paper. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I'm going to move in my next set of colors. I'm going to do some seagrass, olive, and paradise teal. And then I have here some alcohol ink cardstock. It's glossy on one side and it's matte on the other. We want to make sure we're working on the glossy side. And then I have here a stencil and I'm working on the Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station and I have a craft sheet here too. And the reason I'm using that is it is a metal work surface and we have magnets so you can hold down your stencil so that it makes for easier ink blending. And your stencil doesn't move and it makes it a lot easier to work. So let me grab my blending tools here again. And this time I'm gonna start with my darker color olive. Same, this is the same as before. You still use the dome blending foam. And then we're just gonna pick random places on the stencil. To color in with this first color. It's over here. And a little bit over here. And then next, I'm going to take some Paradise Teal. Since I'm using two greens, I'm using the blue to break up the greens. So I'm kind of putting, um, my plan is to put the blue in between the two greens here. this and put some more over here. Okay. Next I have my seagrass. And I'll just finish this up. Filling in the rest of the spots. And a little bit more over here. And you can move your magnets to a different spot as you're working across the surface here. And this is another really quick, easy technique that you get really great results with. Okay. And I think I want to go back to my green, my darker green olive. I'll get this one last corner here, like so. And that'll do it. Just remove your magnet. And look how beautiful that is. Bring that closer so you can see. 
And then you want to make sure that you clean your stencil since this is archival ink with some 91% um, alcohol. And we'll save that for later to do. So I'm going to show you some other ways that you can use it and the different looks. So this is the first one that we did today. And then we did it on glossy cardstock and you can see the difference in the appearance. This is a more blended look and this is a more bokeh look, which both are very great looks and it just depends what you're going for. And then here we did it through a stencil and kind of like in a gradient. So that's another way you could do it. And this was on glossy. These are all on glossy. Another um, one that's through a stencil and this one was put in a diagonal pattern. So that's another idea. And then this one is in the background has stripes of archival ink. And then we put a piece of vellum that was printed just to give it a subdued kind of look. And then next we have another layered stripe gradient pattern here. And then it's instead of stamping with black, we stamped with the color of archival ink. So these are just some of the ideas that you can do with archival ink blended backgrounds. And I hope you'll give us a try. And if you'd like to see more techniques for using archival inks, keep watching.